Hello, my name is Jack Josephowitz, and I'm a scientist who works in the field of material science and aerospace electronics. Oftentimes, people ask me to explain what thermal conductivity is and to talk about its role in a variety of different applications from aerospace to our uh, daily experiences. So, um, in this little brief, I'd like to try to explain what thermal conductivity is and how it impacts thermal effects in materials. Thermal conductivity is normally denoted by the Greek symbol lambda, and it has units of watt per meter Kelvin. Kelvin is a unit of temperature. The thermal conductivity of materials vary greatly depending on their type. For example, if you look at the difference between a metal and a plastic, the first thing you would notice as a material scientist is that the microscopic structure on the atomic le level for these materials is quite different, starkly different. In a metal, I've depicted a cartoon of black atoms arranged in a very organized manner, which is true, this is the way they're organized because normally they're in a crystalline form. I'm only showing two dimensions here, but they're organized this way in three dimensions in such an organized way. And typically they have a particular structure, whether it's cubic or some other rhombohedric or some other geometric uh, building block. Nevertheless, all of these are um, very organized in terms of the atoms. And um, you see the coupling which I've drawn here in orange. That coupling is um, a coupling where the atoms feel each other, they feel their presence, and they feel an interaction because of bonding that happens between the atoms in this material. So these can be considered like springs in, 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 uh, in regards to the atomic level bonding forces. By contrast, when you look at a plastic, plastics are organized typically as um, what's referred to as amorphous materials or non-crystalline materials where there is no organized structure but where you have long chains of molecules which have atoms that are coupled also together like in the case of the metals but where the molecules are independent of each other much more independent of each other they're, they're, they're more, they, they behave more as units or single entities different from each other in terms of uh, their coupling. However, the coupling within a molecule is similar to the coupling between atoms in a metal. So, um, in terms of how this impacts thermal conductivity, if you take the metal and you irradiate it with a hot lamp, on one side, then what happens is that end of the metal gets hot, as we know. And what that corresponds to, the reason the metal gets, gets hot, is as it absorbs the thermal energy, what happens is the thermal energy causes the individual atoms exposed to this thermal heat to start to vibrate more violently so that they fill a bigger space and as they vibrate, as they move around, because of the coupling, like the spring coupling, which is bo the bond, as they move more violently, their interaction with the next neighbor causes the next neighbor to start to vibrate violently. And consequently, as you go into the material, this energy is transferred, this thermal energy is transferred through this increase of vibration in the nearest neighbors and then next nearest neighbors and so slowly the energy gets transferred through this transfer handoff of vibra vibration energy that causes the material to be hot and eventually 
the thermal energy moves from one end to the other end. Now the rate at which this moves is dependent on the thermal conductivity. The higher the thermal conductivity, the faster this process happens from one end to another. And the handoff of energy from one atom to the next and how, how quickly it gets to the other side is also related, as you can see, to the orientation and organization of the atoms. By contrast, in a plastic material, you see there is no organized structure that's obvious, so that when you irradiate a plastic on one end, yes, the molecules on the end get hot, because they start to vibrate violently, and they, like in the case of the metal, they then transfer to nearest neighbors through this interatomic coupling, like springs, so that uh, nearest neighbors start to vibrate. But as you can see, if we follow a particular molecule routing, it doesn't necessarily efficiently move from one side to the other side, but it follows its spaghetti-like random directionality. So we go, we go in this case like this, instead of straight through we go like this. And other atoms which are oriented in different directions and coiled and so on and so forth, you can see that the thermal energy will very inefficiently move from one end to the other end. And so the thermal conductivity of this material is low which impacts the slower rate of energy transport of heat energy from one end to the other end. Now, in, practical, in a practical sense, what this means is, in our everyday lives, if you happen to have a hobby uh, of cooking, or you're a chef, or you're just making dinner, if you use a cast iron frying pan, and you have something cooking away in this frying pan under high heat for any significant period of time, you're not going to pick up the frying pan like I just did. You'd burn your hand. Basically, this is a metal, and the burner would heat up the bottom of the pan, and it would very efficiently and very quickly, because it's high thermal conductivity, move to the handle. And so you couldn't pick it up this way. You'd need an insulator to hold it, a pot holder. By contrast, a better design is this frying pan, which has a, pl a totally plastic handle. And in this case, as I discussed here, the, the frying pan may be at the same temperature as in the case of the cast iron pan, but the thermal energy will, will very, very slowly make its way up this handle, and in fact, in most cases, it won't be hot enough that you would need a pot holder. So this is a practical realization of using a high thermal conductivity metal to do your cooking, but a plastic handle so that you can pick it up and it won't burn your hand without a pot holder. In the area of aerospace and electronics reliability, the rule of thumb is that for every 10 degrees increase in operating temperature, you have a 50% reduction in reliability. So a lot of effort in material science is going into surrounding electronics with uh, different kinds of organic materials that have uh, special kind of fillers like ceramics, which produce a higher thermal conductivity in a plastic when you embed ceramics in it so that that material can bleed the thermal energy away from the components and lower their operating temperature. So there's a lot of research going on, especially in organic chemistry, for this purpose. And of course, there are a lot, there's a lot of uh, uh, research going on with regards to composites where metals are mixed with ceramics or mixed with plastics. Uh, to, to affect a change in thermal properties like thermal conductivity in the material. So having said that, I hope this gives a, a, a good understanding, a simple understanding um, of thermal conductivity and uh, explains on a fundamental level why 
Uh, some materials like metals have a significantly higher thermal conductivity than plastics. Thank you.